Hello everyone, welcome to Apex Hour. Uh, my name is Nikhil Madan and in today's video we are going to learn about user agent flow uh, with implicit grant type. Before I proceed, I would like to tell you about myself. Uh, uh, my name is Nikhil Madan and I'm a Salesforce technical architect with PepsiCo and I live in Dallas and I own a blog uh, with Salesforce Musketeer and I have also a channel with Salesforce Musketeer. So uh, we have following agendas uh, where we are going to cover a uh, user agent flow and learn about uh, its definition and we will see what is implicit grant type and then we will also uh, see in demo how it works. So what is a user agent flow? So in this flow, user authorizes a native desktop or mobile application or single page application to access data using an external or embedded browser. It uses implicit grant type. So when you have any application uh, downloaded uh, locally in your system, uh, so that's called native desktop application, or you have a mobile application in your mobile, or single page application, for example, Netflix, where the uh, it dynamically renders to user based on user interaction and dynamically gets the data from a server. So that is single page application. So, and when we don't want these kind of application to store a client secret in them, then we go with the user agent flow. So it uses implicit grant type. And what is a grant? So grant is a method of acquiring an access token. An access token is a short lived session ID that once anybody has this, then they can get the access of the data in the protected resource for example in salesforce uh, once i have an access token then i can get the data from salesforce now what is implicit grant so it's a simplified flow where the access token is returned directly to the client in this implicit flow the authorization server may return the access token as a parameter in the callback url or as a response to the form post so here what happens is i made a request uh, to the authorization endpoint uh, of a salesforce and in return i get the url where the access token is encoded in that url so that is an implicit grant although we are uh, learning this user agent flow but salesforce don't recommend this option because there is a potential of uh, this access token can get leaked so Salesforce recommend a um, different flow, which I will also tell you in for the slides. So some key points that we need to consider. So access token and URLs are easily leaked as it is encoded in redirectional URL. That's what I just said. So you must use window.location.replace to remove the callback from browser history. So when browser, if you see that browser history, um, it stores some data in it. So when you uh, put your cursor on the browser search, then it automatically gives you uh, data based on the browser history. So it might store the access token also. So we can use this window.location.replace to remove this callback URL or this URL with access token. So we use this flow when we can't trust the user agent application with the client secret. So that is one of the key points that why we want to use user agent, that we don't want a client secret to be shared with those applications. It is the responsibility of SP or nat native application to take care of refresh token. So once they uh, get the access token, they all can also get refresh token. And refresh token is a, a sensitive thing which they need to uh, take care of so that it doesn't get leaked from there. Now the Salesforce recommends using OR 2.0 web server flow with proof key for code exchange instead of user agent flow. So I've told you when we should use user agent flow when we can't give the uh, client secret and we are using the native desktop applications or SPA then we use user agent. So in these scenarios go with the uh, web server flow with proof key for code exchange instead of user agent flow but we should also learn uh, user agent flow for our legacy systems as well as for exam purpose so um, we, when we will create a connected app we can pro put a scope there of refresh token so if that scope is not given then we will not get the refresh token uh, back from the authorization server but if we give this refresh token, then we get the authorization token back from the server. 
So implicit flow bypass the code exchange step and instead the access token is returned in the query string fragment to the client immediately. It is a very important thing here to remember that if you remember in web server flow, we first hit the uh, token endpoint where we get authorization token endpoint where we get the authorization code first. Once we fetch that authorization code, then we hit the token endpoint and get the access token. But here we just made a one request where we directly get the access token. So there's no uh, intermediate step of retrieving the authorization code. So when to use it, although I've already explained when to use it, but let's, uh, let's go through it again. So when a native, you are using native application and don't want to save client secret in it so that there's a potential that it might get leaked once they decode the application or in single page applications, when you cannot use a client secret because the entire source available to the browser and you can check the browser code, right? Why you can, you can right click on it and inspect and you can check, check the uh, browser URL. So it, it is not safe to, uh, store client secret when you're you are using SPA, so single page applications. Uh, then what is recommended? Then recommended is authorization code flow, which make use of a proof key or code exchange. For this, you can check my next video, which I uh, will upload in Salesforce Musketeer, uh, that if you want to go with, if you want to learn about this uh, proof key for code exchange. Now let's see what happens. So the first step, if you see here, uh, on, from the desktop application, user request an access token and it reaches to an authorization server. So post, so basically it's a get method, not a post. So get method is made to the authorization endpoint where the response type is a token. We provide the client ID. We give the scope. This scope is the same scope which you give in the connected app. It could be less than that, but it could not be more than that. Uh, then you have a redirection URL. This URL must match uh, with the redirection URI you put in the connected app. Otherwise, you will not get the access token back. Then we have a state and display. These are the optional, which you can check in this uh, Salesforce document that what op uh, option uh, values you can provide to it. Uh, then we have, then once you hit the uh, authorization endpoint with all these values, client ID and the scope and redirection URL, then it will give it, then the, the web browser will show you a page where you have to enter the credentials. Once you enter the credentials, then access token will be issued in the response callback URL. Then those, then once you get the access token, refresh token, then based on that, you can fetch the data from the Salesforce system using that access token. It's very simple. So let's go further. Um, so what is the difference between authorization grant type and implicit grant type. So I uploaded my first video in identity and access management section about the OAuth web server flow uh, where I show what is authorization grant type, but here we are learning implicit grant type. So what is exactly the difference between that? So in authorization code grant type, client makes first request to obtain authorization code. And then once they have that authorization code, they will make another request using that authorization code to get the access token. So if you see, we are making two requests, one to the authorization endpoint, then second to the token endpoint in authorization grant type. However, in user agent implicit grant type, client receives the access token in one request only for authorization request. We don't have a concept of authorization code in implicit grant type. And we do not have a client secret uh, we do not have to pass client secret to the URL in implicit grant type. So for him, uh, for him, um, uh, this is very important point. I copied this from the Salesforce document. If you see this link, it tells that you have to use OAuth web server with proof uh, key for code exchange instead of user agent flow. It is intended to be used for user agent based client that can't keep a client secret because of all the application code and storage is easily accessible. So this are the source of information where I copied uh, the data and where I learned uh, about this user agent flow. Now we will go into demo where in demo what we will see, I have installed the Postman uh, application locally in my system and using that application, I will show you how we can um, go through this user agent flow. 
so this is the um, org which I'm going to use to show demo first I'll go to app manager and then I will click on new connected app and here I will say that um, user agent demo postman December 21st and I will provide my email ID here and I will enable OAuth and here I will put my any website link I will put this link so I'll go here so I will come here and give this callback URL of my website and here I will give the access full access and if I want refresh token I will give refresh token access as well and I think that's it then I will just save it now I will try to get the consumer ID and consumer key so here I got the consumer key we don't need consumer secret as we discussed for the user agent flow so consumer key is enough uh, now I will open the postman so first I will do is provide the uh, my custom domain here which I can copy it from here my custom domain was this uh, authorize this if you see I'm providing the endpoint also authorization endpoint and now uh, what I will do here is I will put the parameters like for example response type which is token and then I will put client ID which I will copy it from here so I'll copy this client ID and I'll put it in the postman here and then I will provide the key which is redirection and I will put my website name which is this I'll remove the slash and just remember you have to click on send and download because you it will you have to open that in the browser so I'll say demo underscore test to I'll save it and I will open it so once I clicked on that file it um, opens it here like this where it asked me that do you allow access I already had it logged in that's why I was coming up with this page otherwise it had asked me to lo uh, put credentials and I would have put my username and password and then this would have been the second page but I'll click on allow access and once I do this you can copy it it uh, redirects me to the redirect URL uh, which we provided but if you see if I copy this here and I'll put it in the here for you if you see it here that I got the access token here and once you get the access token then you can always get the data from the Salesforce only thing you need to remember this percentage 21 needs to be re uh, replaced with the exclamation and then now you got the access token after this access token now uh, you can fetch account data and lead data from the Salesforce system so I think this ends up our demo uh, if you like our video please subscribe to apex our channel um, thank you